Good afternoon, software engineers. I've got a green screen. Neat. Yeah, so I'm still working on getting it working exactly right. There's still like a little thing down in there. And also, <laughs> I'm kind of floating in the slides. Uh, but I don't know, you know, I got a green screen. So neat. Um, I wanted to do a quick recap of what we did during the live Q&A today. Um, I didn't record it. I kind of forgot to turn it on, but that's okay. There was only a few questions that I thought were worth coming back and talking about. So I'm going to do those really quick. And then uh, I'll do my normal lecture in a video uh, probably later today. I might take down the green screen because I'm still trying to figure out how I want to do it and things like that. But oh, the possibilities. Anyway, so first um, there was a question about the DevOps report, which is coming up. So uh, the main thing to know about the DevOps report, uh, the question that came was how long should it be? And the usual answer to these is long enough. So yeah, yeah. Now let's think about it this way. If in the four sections there for Django, GitHub, Heroku, and Travis, uh, you wrote, everything was great. New, new section. Everything was great. New section. Everything was great. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. But then if you wrote five pages for each one of those going into minute detail about every single check-in and how things were going, yeah, that's way too much. Um, you know, ballpark, you're probably looking at half to three quarters to one page for each section. Really depends upon what was going on with your team. Um, I want these sections to talk more about what challenges your team face, how you overcame them, tips and tricks for the next semester, your experiences. Um, there's not a lot of right and wrong here as long as you are going into each of these sections and giving me a good picture of what your team did and how it felt and what worked, what didn't work, you know, that sort of thing. So it is kind of a, a, a retrospective, a um, experience report, you might say. And the same goes for the Scrum Master's report, as a matter of fact, at the end of the semester. It's a very, very similar thing. The beta testing report, the next document that's due, I mean, that's obviously a, a different animal, but for these two, that's kind of what we're looking for. So that was that was one of them. There's also a question about uh, coupling and cohesion, so we talked a little bit, a bit more about that, did a few more examples kind of talking about what makes good coupling and bad coupling and, and, and that sort of thing, and it was in the context of the Quiz 4 um, example, and the people on the call um, had all, there weren't many of us, um, had all done quiz four, so it wasn't a big deal, but in, in respect for those that might need to turn it in late or anything like that, um, I'm going to hold off on that discussion, but if you want to talk about coupling and cohesion more, I'm certainly happy to do so. And the other question was one that, um, is something I certainly would have talked about up till now, uh, in class because it would have been asked at some point, but it makes sense for me to go ahead and talk about it here, which is exactly how do I grade the project, uh, particularly in the light of, everything so let me just answer in, in in the general sense in in a normal world how would i do it well um so your team's going to sign up for a 15 minute demo with me and in in a normal semester uh we would do this during lab i would do a quick demo in lab and then i'd go back to my office and grade it so it, this is kind of a similar format um, you'll do a 15 minute demo, make sure I see everything that you think makes your project special or exciting or something you're super proud about. That's something I really want to see. So we, we talk about those things and I'll go back later and, and play with it myself. Um, when I'm in the project, I am looking for core functionality, making sure that it doesn't crash. I'm looking for if I do something wrong, that it handles that in a reasonable way. Um, so put in a, I don't know, um, try to buy something that doesn't exist, you know, that sort of thing. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not out there to try my best to black hat break your system, but I am going to, you know, test it a little bit. Does it have to be absolutely perfect? No, it doesn't. Does it have to have every feature? No, it doesn't. Does it have to look like it was designed by Johnny Ive himself from Apple? No, of course not. Do I expect it to not have you know, flashing hot pink text on a bright yellow background. Yeah, I expect you to have reasonable design sense here. Uh, the number one design issue that I typically see is people who want to use UVA colors, not a bad thing, but then they use black text on a navy blue background. No, you can't do that. Not only can I not read it very well at all, colorblind people can't read that at all either. So, you know, that things like that. Um, if, you're, if your website is mostly white, 
then you're probably okay. I mean, if, if it's white with just the default font, that that's kind of old school Geo Cities. I'm not looking for that. I want you to put some some thought into it, but it doesn't have to be just incredible. So I'm going to look at it from a customer perspective, and then you know you're going to get the 25,000 points as a part of the beta version at the end of Sprint Six, and the other 25,000 will come as a part of that final evaluation that I'll do. And I will be looking at it, you know, in that kind of, from a customer perspective, is this something that I would, I would accept? Now, that's just the first level. So I completely understand that some of you feel like you did more work than others. Some of you, it's been hard for you. We understand that as well. Um, there's a lot of, people are coming from a lot of different places to this project this year. So the first thing that I will do is I'll look at the team evaluations, the final team evaluations, and see... How do people feel about what other people did? And I'll also look at the TA evaluation. So the TA is going to go in and evaluate all members of the team and say, yes, I think this person pulled their way. No, they didn't. This person went above and beyond, you know, that sort of thing. Now, honestly, for 75% of the teams, probably now it's in a normal semester, it's probably about that many this semester. I, I don't know, but in a, in a normal world, um, I'll look at a project. The project looks pretty good good pretty good i'll look at the evals and everyone's like yep we all did our part we all did we all you know we like each other it, it was good you know this person may have had a little problem but you know overall we like each other and or, and and things worked out and the ta said yeah they work fine together i said great and i take the score of the project and everyone gets the same score and i move on to the next team there will be several of those now let's say that i look at that and there's um a student that has a lot of low evaluations um also, I should note in the very final evaluation that you do, because there's the team ones of you every week, and then there's the final evaluation. There's a checkbox that says, um, basically flagging, like, I, I want to flag this evaluation. I want to flag this person. And when you do that, you're telling me, hey, Sheriff, I really want you to take a closer look at what this person's doing. You might flag yourself. You are going to evaluate yourself as well. You might flag yourself and say, hey, look, I really had to you know, I, I think you need to pay attention to what, what I was doing too. I mean, not that I'm not paying attention. You know what I mean? Like super close attention. Okay. So whenever there's a flag, whenever the TA says, Hey, you need to look at this team closer or the evaluations, uh, the final evaluations dip a bit. I go to the next level. So the next thing I look at is I look at the team evaluations throughout the entire semester. Now I've had some people say to me, Hey, Sheriff, I'm just turning in tens and nines for everyone every week saying no comment, no comment, doing great. Is that okay? And the answer is, yeah, if everything's going great, that's exactly what you should be doing. Um, if someone's gone above and beyond giving them a shout out, that helps me at the end when I'm trying to untangle things. But if everything's great, then great. But I'll go back through the semester. And so sometimes I'll see a person that starts with high scores and then they dip lower. So that could mean something happened maybe with this transition. That means something could happen in their personal life. That means I need to take it, see what happened there. Sometimes people start low and then go high. Sometimes they um, don't know what's going on with Django and then, then pick it up or, or we talk to them and then they, they improve. And so maybe their final evaluation score isn't amazing because a, a person's thinking about their contribution the entire year, but then they picked it up at the end. And I want to know that too. Some people have expressed to me concerns that I'm going to go in and look at, okay, this person made X number of GitHub commits. And so that's how I'm going to do things. And this person, this person, absolutely not. I completely understand that some person, the person on a team could be seen as completely pulling their weight. If they were maybe the requirements person, they've really been following up on the requirements. Maybe they've been pair programming with someone the entire time. And so they personally haven't done any commits, but yet they've really been, trying to, to pull their weight. That's fantastic. I want to hear about those people. I want to be able to talk to those, to, to, to know that that's what's going on with those folks. I've just realized I was sitting up so high that my head was getting cut off. I need to sit lower with a green screen. Um, that's totally fine. Okay. Um, I've seen enough of these to know, to know the difference. I've also seen enough of these to know people who go in and make one change, commit, push, one change, commit, push, one change, commit, push to try and make their GitHub commit number go up. I've also known people to go in and make a change across, you know, thousands of files or make a, make a change that, that looks like, oh, look, I, I updated 40,000 lines of code. And I've seen that one too. Um, GitHub commits is just another input. Once I know I need to look closer at a team, I will, ding, email, I will look closer at that team 
Um, and I will look at the GitHub commits, but that doesn't mean that it's the end all be all. That's the exact thing. And then if that doesn't give, if all that doesn't give me a clear enough picture, then I start talking to the team members individually, talking to the scrum master, talking to team members to understand what's going on. So first and foremost, I don't want you to worry about it. Just know that I have graded a lot of team projects. I've graded a lot of 3240 team projects. I have this system. It works. I mean, in my mind, it works. I mean, I look at the final grades. I look at what people did. I feel like that I'm assessing people fairly. And I completely understand if you're nervous about, about your grade going into it. But if you do your part and you keep communicating with your team and you keep moving forward, you don't need to worry about it. Um, and it will all work out. But if you have any specific questions about how the, the team project grading works, I'm happy to answer those. Um, yeah, so I'm going to work on my green screen at some point. That, that corner down there is bothering me. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll see you later today, I guess, as I record the next lecture video, and we'll go from there. I'll catch you later. Bye.